Greetings and salutations, world. I am the Bearded Con Man, and welcome to my long overdue review of Stranger Things 2. So this show, I absolutely loved season one. When they announced two, I lost my mind, especially when they released probably one of the best trailers for any show I have ever seen, period. Now, in two, my expectations were up to here. I was waiting for the show to actually drop and what I thought was 12.01 a.m. our time was actually 12.01 Pacific time. So at 3.01, I started power watching that show and I did not stop. I was completely glued. I had to keep watching. I knocked them all out and I loved it start to finish. The world felt really cinematic. It, it just, it was next level. We went from what we've established in the upside down and all that craziness and it was taken to the next level and it's exactly what I expect from this show. I loved how it ended up. There were only a couple of complaints that I had that are just kind of nitpicky, but overall, man, it was like a solid second installment. I thoroughly loved it start to finish. I loved how it started. I loved how it ended, and I cannot wait for season three. Now we're gonna get into the spoiler side of things, the things I liked and I didn't like. So I love what they did with the kids. I love that Jim Hopper actually had Eleven and has been hiding her for a year. That was an amazing twist. And I love the father and daughter dynamic that's been established between Jane and Jim Hopper. Nancy and Jonathan, I could see that coming from a mile away. I love Sean Astin's character of Bob the Brain. Killed me when he died. That one hurt more than Barb. I think the reason why I cared more about his death is because he was a much more established character than Barb was. Barb was, of course, yeah, she's there, she's Nancy's friend. It really sucked what happened to her. But you know what I mean? There was just a little bit more of caring established with Bob in this season. And then you just hold on to the shot of him getting devoured by the demo dogs. Oh, it sucked. It sucked. It sucked. So I will say very very good job uh, to the Duffer Brothers for creating that character, making it, making me care about him, and getting a talent like Sean Astin to portray Bob the Brain. I think the biggest surprise is the GOAT of Stranger Things Season 2, and that is my boy Steve Harrington. Now Jim Hopper will always be number one, the best character in the show, but Steve Harrington, he got bumped up to the top three. That dude had such a complete 180. He went from being king of the high school pricks to becoming brand from the Goonies, right? I love the dynamic that was established between Steve and Dustin as well. That was amazing. <laughs> the fair thoughts and hairspray. I love how they took these characters and they created these unlikely alliances that you wouldn't expect to happen. They were pulled off beautifully. They really were. It, it just, it was a great result. So I loved all the character interaction, especially the duo that is now Steve and Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> I love that they introduced the idea. It kind of confirmed it for us that 11 is more than just a number. She's the 11th in all the experiments that have been conducted by the bad men. And she actually goes out and finds her sister, eight. So I, I really like that they introduced that idea. Wasn't really a fan of the Lost Sister episode. It was completely worth it just to get that line from Hopper when 11, he and Eleven are talking. And he says, so why do you look like an MTV punk now? That whole exchange made that episode totally worth it. Now the things I didn't like are kind of nitpicky, as I mentioned. Uh, definitely the Lost Sister episode was probably the weakest point. The demo dogs themselves, the CGI, I totally understand why they had to use it, but I loved how they used practical effects on the Demogorgon in season one. It just kind of kept like that 80s vibe that they were going for. And, and again, I totally understand why they went the route of CGI, and it looked good, it just, it kind of took you out of like that 80s feel, you know what I mean? And that's kind of where the cinematic element that I was talking about came in. Also how Dustin handled the dark situation. That felt a little bit out of character for me. 
You know, Dustin is kind of the moral compass, no pun intended, <laughs> from season one. He's always been the moral compass of the group. So when he made this decision to keep Dart a secret, keep him from the group, and then especially when they figured out he was from the Upside Down and he hid it from the group again because he didn't want them to kill it, I, I feel like it, it, was, it was the opposite of what we've come to expect from Dustin. With his knowledge of the Dungeons and Dragons lore, the Upside Down itself, anything from the Upside Down is immediately bad. It's immediately bad, so... I, he really redeemed himself there at the end when he was talking to Dart in the tunnel and he kind of like jumped in front of the group, you know what I mean, like blocked him off. That, I, I was like, okay, he, he's accepting the consequences of his actions and he's not going to let Dart, a problem he literally created, hurt any of his friends. So that redeemed it for me. Probably the biggest surprise for me is where the season itself went. I thought for sure that Will was going to become a shadow walker where he would have the ability to go in between our world and the upside down and they were going to use that ability to get Eleven back. I thought for sure that was the, going to be the entire premise of season two. The fact that they completely flipped that idea on its head, Eleven immediately escaped the upside down after she destroyed the Demogorgon, Hopper was hiding her for a year and Will actually becomes the villain of sorts of the show when he becomes possessed by the Mind Flayer. That was awesome. I love that I didn't see that coming and it played off beautifully. Noah Schapp just knocked it out of the park. That whole exorcism scene, that scared the living... Ah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the other thing I was surprised by is I thought for sure when, you know, even with the hints of he likes it cold, that demo dog that Dustin had Steve put in the refrigerator, I thought for sure that that was going to be the cliffhanger of the season. I thought for sure the demo dog was going to reanimate, it was going to eat Billy, and then evolve into a full-blown Demogorgon before busting out into the woods. I guess with the gate being closed, Eleven closing the gate to the Upside Down, the, you know, the, the hive mind, they're cut off. So, I mean, it's just like anything. You cut the signal, everything goes dead. The other major thing I was surprised by is the idea that Dr. Brenner is still alive. If you remember in the episode where Eleven was kind of in between, not realizing if she was going to go to the dark side or not. And she's interrogating that dude that worked with the bad men and helped torture her mom. He mentioned that he could take Eleven to Brenner because Brenner's the one that they wanted. And when she said, Papa is dead, he said, no, he's still alive. That is huge. I don't know how you get away from a Demogorgon. So I don't know if he's just like messed up and gnarled or if he is somehow embodied by the Upside Down. Maybe he's possessed by the Mind Flayer. I don't know, but that has huge ramifications for when we get into three, if and when Brenna returns. They did a fantastic job with season two and I cannot wait for season three. I love how it ended. I don't know exactly how the Upside Down can come back with Eleven closing the gate, but clearly the Mind Flayer can see the kids from the Upside Down. So, cannot wait for season three. I loved it. It was fantastic. I just don't know what I'm going to do with my life until three comes out. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for my review of Stranger Things 2. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like on this video and subscribe today. Hit that red button and follow it up with that blue bell to turn notifications on for each time I upload a video. I would greatly appreciate it. And let me know in the comment section below if there was anything I missed, if there was something that you liked or didn't like that I didn't mention in this video, I would love to get a conversation started. Until then guys, I am the Bearded Con Man. And remember, beard, be exceptional and rad dudes. We'll see you next time. It's about the best 11 face I can do. <laughs>